Hi, everybody, and welcome to Fanshawe's virtual open house today. I'm so excited to have our panelists here today um, chatting with us, and I'm so glad you could be here to uh, take in this session as well. Um, just a couple quick housekeeping items before we get started. One is that you'll probably have already noticed that your microphone and webcam are not turned on for this session. So we can't see you, we can't hear you, but we'd really still like to hear from you. So if you can have any questions throughout the session for our panelists, I'd be happy to collect your questions using the, there's a question, on, I, question mark icon on the bottom of your screen, and you can use the chat feature there to send in some questions. I'll collect them throughout our session and um, make sure that we can get to as many of them as possible during the session. And if we can't get to them all, um, we'll, we'll have some contact information for you to get, get to us a little bit later. Um, and the last thing is that the webinar actually works a lot better if you can close as many windows as possible on your web browser. It, it helps to sort of keep everything from lagging on the webinar. So if you can just take a minute to close some of those windows now, that would be really helpful. So um, that's all I have. I'll have a bit more information for you at the end, uh, but I'm so glad you could be here. I just want to thank all of our panelists for being here today. It's so fun to see you. Uh, even in everybody's homes and offices. So um, with that, don't forget to use the question uh, the question feature throughout the session, and I'll turn it over to you guys now. At Fanshawe Simcoe Norfolk Campus, our approach is this. We believe experience matters. We combine classroom learning with hands-on experience for the best possible career preparation. Because when opportunity knocks, you'll be ready. We offer eight post-secondary programs designed with industry leaders in our community to prepare you for high demand careers. And because we build our programs with industry leaders and meet their hiring criteria, we have the highest employment rate in Ontario. Our campus has over 300 students with a friendly family feel and all the benefits of a larger campus. We know your name and there is a lot of support to help you succeed. Some of our programs are offered in an accelerated format so you can complete a typically longer program in a shorter period of time. At Fanshawe Simcoe Norfolk Campus, we welcome the opportunity to assist individuals individuals to help them achieve their goals. We offer a range of free upgrading programs and services, including assessments, academic and career entrance certificate program, college preparation for adults, literacy and basic skills program, and general education diploma preparation. In our agribusiness management program, you'll be managing every step of the supply chain from farm to table and everything in between. While the class time provides you with theory, the field placement gives you valuable real-world experience. From relationship management and selling to marketing, finance, employee relations, food safety, learning to lead and manage, and so much more, this program prepares you to enter the agricultural sector at a supervisory level to either manage an existing organization or as an entrepreneur. You'll graduate with a competitive edge for a multitude of jobs that need qualified people understanding agribusiness fundamentals and industry-specific training. At Fanshawe Simcoe Norfolk Campus, you'll save money by staying close to home, be a part of programs that have high demand jobs, smaller class sizes mean more personalized attention, free parking and fast track and accelerated programs to get you out in the working world sooner. Join us. We'd love to see you at graduation. Thank you for joining us for today's session. I'd like to introduce you to Larry Cavan, the program coordinator of the Agribusiness Management Program. Thank you, Jessica. Um, joining with, with me today is uh, Wanda Jacobs, our lead instructor in the program, and Melissa Robottom, who is our practicum consultant. Melissa, Melissa looks after all the field placement stuff for us. Really important in this program. So we've got a, some PowerPoint panels we're going to go through here. 
and then we're going to take some questions in a bit. Are we okay, Jessica? Technical problems? <laughs> Possibly. I'm sure your presentation will cover quite a bit of the the um, the co-op and placement opportunities in the program. Hey, Larry. Yeah. Because I could go ahead and ask maybe a couple questions now to get us started, but I wonder if we'd be going back in time a little bit as well. Well, well if if you would like, maybe um, while we're trying to get the PowerPoint up, I can talk a little bit about um, how this uh, how. The Ag Business Program came to be. That'd be great, Wanda. Okay, so um, this program was develop, developed after much consultation with the many employers in in and outside of our community. So they really sat down and took the time to talk to us about what it was that they needed um, in hiring people to work. Uh, at their businesses, at their farms. And um, all of that was taken into consideration and, uh, and the program was put together and put forward for recommendation to be able to deliver. Um, so I think it's important for you to know that. We didn't just sit down and, and develop a program. Uh, we did it in consultation with many employers and many businesses in the area. Um, so uh, I see That's the great. PowerPoint is up. So. All right, thanks. Well, thank you, Wanda. Thanks, Jessica. So um, yes, my name is Larry Cavan, the program coordinator. So I look after the program from an academic perspective. So any questions related to the program as a whole, I'll be able to answer them for you or direct or you to somebody else who can answer them. So our, our campus is located in Simcoe, Norfolk. <coughs> The town of Simcoe in Norfolk uh, County. It's a small campus, but it's got so many advantages because of that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that you, in the in the film you just or the video you just um, listened to. It did touch on it a bit. So if we can move on to the next panel, I'll talk a little bit about the program. So the agribusiness management program is the study of agricultural production. Managing every step of the supply chain from farm to table and everything in between. So it's very comprehensive. It's a dynamic and complex field. Agribusiness is adaptive and flexible, responding to new technological advances while remaining sustainable globally. And the flexibility and the adaptivity is <coughs> fundamental to our, our, our program and the courses that you will take. So the management graduate certificate will allow you to enter the agricultural sector at a supervisory level, preparing you to either manage an existing organization or as an entrepreneur. You'll graduate with a competitive edge, understanding business fundamentals and industry specific training. So you do not, you will not require an additional credential to assume a position in the agribusiness management. This is a graduate certificate, so this is the, the one that will prepare you in its entirety. So some of the features and benefits, and this is just a, a brief sort of summary. Practical learning. The class time provides you with theory and, excuse me, while the field placement gives you real world experience. And, and this is the combination that's ideal for uh, this type of certificate. Specialized training in less than a year. Um, and we're gonna look at the structure of the program in a, in a couple minutes. You'll be on the fast track to a management career. Finding the balance between theory and practice is really what we do best. 
and our agribusiness management program offers traditional lectures and practical hands-on training as well as a six-week field placement giving you the experience you need to succeed and that desire to have you succeed is fundamental to us our our goal throughout the time you are you spend in the program is to facilitate your success and it's something that we really focus on not from just a program perspective from but from every one of our courses and of course our field placement um, all of the um, community college diploma and certificate programs are governed by learning outcomes i'm not going to read all of these to you but these are the learning outcomes that um, are sort of the foundation for all the theory and practice that you will encounter. And you will, you will accomplish these learning outcomes in a combination of classwork and field work. And when you're finished the certificate, you should be able to demonstrate these uh, learning outcomes uh, when you go into your vocation. Just a brief summary of some of the topics that you will um, encounter in your courses. Sales and marketing, human resources and relationship management, occupational health and safety, which is a really key course in this program, accounting and finance, food safety and traceability, safe hand handling and application of pesticides, and precision technologies such as GPS and drone apps. Now, there are basically three parts to the program, uh, three semesters, if you will. When you begin in January um, or next September, whenever you enter the program, these will be the first six courses that you will take. And um, you must be successful in completing these six courses to progress forward in the program. And successful meaning pass, means passing all the courses and maintaining a 60% average. So if we could look at semester two next. It's basically the same number of courses, different topics, but the same amount of time each uh, semester, semester one and semester two are 12 weeks in length. There's a one week break between them. And when you've completed all of semester one and semester two successfully, then you are eligible to do your field placement in semester three. And that's a six week field placement. And Melissa Robottom is here. Our, field, our practicum coordinator, and I'm just going to ask her to take a minute and tell, I'll tell you about some of the placement opportunities that um, will be available to you and hopefully will eventually lead to employment. Melissa, could you take that please? Yeah, thanks Larry. So um, like Larry said, it's a six week practice or placement that you would be on. So it's a total of 240 hours over those six weeks. So there's a variety of places that you can take your uh, placement. So in the past, we have um, placed people at farms. So they would do like a supervisory position at a farm or at an orchard, for instance. Um, other places I've done is wineries. So they've learned everything that has to do with winemaking um, and then how to run the business. Um, other places such as restaurants, so they're learning from farm to table. So they are actually doing some of the buying of the local produce and local meats that the restaurants will use and how they are used them. And I've also had a student at one of our local restaurants who actually was taking care of the local garden that they had in their backyard, um, so doing the farm to table for that as well. Um, I've also had students uh, go into places like a farm market and uh, ran some um, testing, some testing uh, of products through there. Um, also, I've had people do um, organic farms, which is a big one. So they learned everything they had to know about uh, how to do organic uh, produce, um, so fruits and vegetables. 
I've gone had students do food packaging plants as well. So um, they're in a factory learning about the business and how that works. Um, and I've also had students at lending agencies such as banks where they are uh, participating and learning about the financial part of that, about how to do loans for um, businesses such as farms and even uh, loans for like equipment, um, like big tractors and, and combines. Um, I've also had some people um, choose to do some entrepreneur stuff. So they've had a great idea of what they would love to develop. Um, so they've gone out and done some entrepreneur stuff. So um, I've set up some learning outcomes for that and how they would be um, evaluated on that. And I've also had some students go into medical marijuana um, farms and to learn how to do the business of that. So there's a wide variety of places that you can do your placements. Um, if any of those, if you're thinking about something that is not on what I just talked about, then I'd be more than happy to sit down and talk to you about that. And hopefully we can make some contacts and get you into a place that um, you would like to go to. Um, that's one of my goals for when I put people out on placement. I put you somewhere where you might want to, you know, see yourself after your after your six week placement. So I would put you there um, so you can get a feel for it and uh, learn to do some networking and making some contacts. So hopefully that will help you in the future. So it's a six week placement, 240 hours, it's a great learning experience. And uh, it's a great time to show the people out there in the industry what you've learned in class and uh, what you can do. So back Thanks. to you, Larry. Thanks, Melissa. So we just have one more panel to look at here and then we will take questions. So the college has an accessibility division that supports students with documented disabilities. And if that is the situation for you, you can see there's information here about who to contact and don't hesitate to do so. And our counselor for our campus, her name is Danielle Randall and she's listed here at the bottom of the panel. So don't hesitate to contact her if it's appropriate for you. So that's the end of our presentation. And we'd be happy to take any questions if anyone has any. That's so great. Thanks very much, Larry and, and Melissa as well. I do have a couple questions here for you all. Um, this one might actually be for Melissa, first of all. Um, it is about, and I think we get this question fairly often, do students choose their placements on their own? Can they find it on their own? And how would they do that? Uh, with, with the Anchor Business Management, they are welcome to find their own placement. And once, if they have found a placement, it just has to go through me to make sure that it is approved and it would uh, meet the learning outcomes of the placement. So we, I would sit down with the student, talk to them about that, and uh, then I would make contact with that employer to ensure that it's an appropriate uh, placement. So yeah, so they can find their own for this program. Do you have like some suggestions or would you, what do, do students do one more than the other typically? Um, a lot of farm work mainly for, for this one. Um, and just a variety of farms. So everything from organic to orchards to strawberries to watermelons, like it's it's kind of crazy. So, you know, we're, we are very rich in Norfolk County with the amount of farming that we have. We're very agriculturally based. So we have a variety of places that uh, students can go to. So it's a great place to do your placement. Totally, it's a great place for the program overall. Yeah, yes. it is, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Um, and this one might be for you a little bit more, Larry, but I'll let you decide on this. Um, what sorts of jobs are available for employment after taking the program for graduates? Well, the, the list of settings that Melissa just um, summarized really is a broad spectrum of the types of places where you'll find employment. Um, sure. And we, we find in, in nearly all our programs, not just agribusiness, in nearly all our programs that feel, that have a field placement component, um, often, are, if it's a good fit, our students end up finding at least um, some opportunities, either with that particular employer or in that particular sector. So there is a direct connection between all those 
places that uh, Melissa referenced and the possibility for employment. Sure, it sounds like there are quite a few networking opportunities just within the learning components of the program. Yes. Definitely. That is awesome. I love it when students are actually asking about that. <laughs> um, so in the video, uh, you had mentioned a little bit more about the Simcoe campus and the nature of it being um, a regional campus has some definite draws for students. Yes. And um, but one question I think I might also say you get pretty often probably is whether there's a residence at the Simcoe campus. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that's the one thing we can't provide. <laughs> we, we, we do we do we are able to offer our stu students a list of of places that offer um, rentals and so forth in Simcoe, um, sure. but we we don't have a residence. So that's that's an easy one to answer. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. gotta be. Got to be immersed yeah. in the Simcoe experience. <laughs> yeah, we do get asked all the time. That's true. Um, is there any sort of government support? Does, oof, this is a complicated question. Does the program cover the governmental support in funding the agribusiness entrepreneurs? Is the question. Wanda, do you have any sense of of that one? Are there any, any programs that you're avail that you're aware of? Well, what everyone needs to know is that we do have a community career and employment services. I manage that department for the Simcoe Norfolk campus. And so we are, are um, aware of all the different types of funding uh, programs that are becoming available. Um, we get the feed from the ministry, uh, letting us know what's going on. So at this moment, I can't say that there is one uh, that is available. Uh, but we would be knowledgeable about anything that's coming forward and would make sure it was communicated to the, to the students. Sure. Thanks. Well, thanks well. Yes, thank you. Um, I have one more question here. And just a reminder, feel free to continue to add questions to the field there, to the chat feature. Um, I have a question about part-time working. Is that possible given the schedule and do many students do that? Well, um, it's always a uh, student's choice. Um, this is a very demanding program, very compressed over the 10 month period. Sure. Um, I usually recommend if students um, desire to maintain a part-time job while they're studying to keep it as minimum as possible maybe hmm. 10 or 12 hours a week at the most, because it, 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 if, students, if, if students make too much of a commitment to employment, we do see it really affecting their academic. Oh. Yeah, so it's an individual choice, but um, there's a lot involved in this program. Okay. And if I could add to that too, um, you know, you're going to have to put 40, 50 hours a week into the program. And we're doing everything at our end to try to make sure that um, with it being online that the the professors aren't overlapping um, and putting big demands on everyone on uh, certain days or certain weeks. So we are trying to do that for you and that'll be part, it'll be put into your, your student timetables when you, when you get them. Um, but what sure. sometimes happens is someone takes on a part-time job and they begin to see the part-time job as being their primary focus rather than their class, uh, their course. What you have to keep in mind that your primary focus is the course yeah. and secondary comes the part-time. So even when you're going into discussions with the employers about hiring you part-time, you need to, to be clear on um, your commitment to the course. And um, again, with being on the employment services side of the college, there are lots of employers that are willing to work with you, but you just, you need to take control of the time that you're giving to them and the course. Yeah. I think that's good advice for all students. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I have one more question, uh, which is about admissions, actually. What kind of Things are students doing before they come into this program. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? 
there, there are really no prerequisites because all the students have either a college diploma or a university degree. Those are the, um, that's really the prerequisite for the certificate. Um, so if I could, yeah. yeah, if there's something. I, yeah, I could add to that too. So if you, if you wanted to get to, uh, get to know the Fanshawe Online structure and how to use that because you will be using that um, we can uh, we can connect you with our adult upgrading program and and we can get you started in uh, getting yourself uh, familiar with that so when you do come and you get you're starting in January you've already uh, have familiarized yourself with how that works um, and if there's anything else too that uh, you might want to to get um, some support in, you can you can talk to Tracy from the Adult Upgrading Department about um, things that she can do to help you out um, to make sure you're successful in the program. Yeah, that might be a good thing for a student who's been out of academic work for a while and is returning. Uh, that might give you some comfort with the technology and what to expect. That's a great, great suggestion. Sure, people are coming from all over the place. Yeah, and they're, they're a great team to work with. I mean, all the staff at our campus really care about you and your success. So uh, know that, uh, you know, we're just uh, uh, here to support you uh, every step of the way. We want to make sure that you graduate at the end of the day and that your experience here is one like being part of the Fanshawe family. I love the individualized approach. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, it's great. Well, I think we're coming up to the end of this session here. So I just want to thank you guys again for being here today, our panelists. I have, I always love hearing about this program coming from an agricultural background myself. And I just think it's great to learn about the program. And I'm glad you could take the time today um, for our attendees. And to our attendees, thank you for joining us this afternoon for this session. If you have any further questions, um, outside of the program for Fanshawe, um, maybe about admissions or about student life or anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our contact is on the event page that you clicked through for this session, so feel free to go through that or to book an appointment to talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody about um, different pathways from the programs or maybe you're not sure whether you can get in or anything like that, be happy to chat with you. So thanks again to everyone and thanks to Jessica for all of your uh, support with the slideshow and everything and the video as well. Um, thanks for being here this afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Hey, hope to see you. Bye-bye.